wildebeest horns made of ivory. Um, let me first just point you in the direction of that big male wildebeest there. And as Jandre takes you closer to him and you marvel at how pretty he actually is, I can also answer the question there for you, uh, Violet. The, um, the horns are not made of ivory. Ivory, by definition, is tooth enamel. Whereas the horns that you're looking at on top of the head of this wildebeest are keratin, which is a type of hair. So keratin is what your fingernail and your hair on your head is made of. That is what you're looking at there now. Whereas ivory is tooth enamel. So if you take your fingernail and you tap your teeth, that, that uh, clinkiness, I suppose, is what ivory is. So this is ivory. Although not mine, some of mine are not ivory anymore. Ivory, <laughs> these side ones, and keratin. So that's a wildebeest horn. This is an elephant tusk or a hippo tooth, for lack of a better description. I suppose the only two worthwhile ivories. Uh, rhino horn, keratin, very similar to, to that. Buffalo, keratin. And in North America or other parts of the world where you have antelope, uh, their horns and their antlers are all keratin, a type of fingernail or the, the same compound that your fingernails are made of. So hopefully that answered your question there. Just have a look at how close we're standing to the zebra. We've now been here for probably going on 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. And the zebra and wildebeest are very comfortable with us at a 50 yard, 50 meters or so away from where we're standing. Look at those tails. Now that's interesting. They were not wagging their tails like that five minutes ago. And now they've started. And that will be incessant from now until tonight when the sun goes down. That's quite interesting. I've actually never noticed that before. Well, was I missing it before? Were they waving their tails before? I don't think they were. That is interesting. I have never made that observation before. Obviously, zebra are, wave their tails all day and they won't stop waving their tails. The fact that they only seem to have started waving their tails in the last couple of minutes is interesting. Why? I would I don't know. I mean, it's not because the fly activity of, has all of a sudden started. I'm not being plagued by flies at all just yet. It will come though, but not just yet. Wow, I'm stumped. <laughs> I don't know. Let's move across a little bit, if you don't mind. Let's go and see what they're doing. cold enough for our noses to start running so if you'd excuse me just wiping my face every now and again <laughs> the moisture is coming out much <laughs> here we go we've got these now close to us they stopped chewing what they were chewing no nope, gone back to chewing so they we still even though we've come closer by 15 yards or so they're still very comfortable with us and then the wildebeest on that side Herd size is increased. Oh, and far in the distance, there's some impala there as well. The edge of the clearing. A little bit tough for Jandre to get. Of course, that would be at the extreme range of the, of the camera's ability. And he hasn't got a tripod. He's basically just holding this camera up with muscle power. Augustia, I've just been asked a question about wildebeest and females. I'm just going to ask Kirsty if she wouldn't mind repeating it again. I didn't quite get the middle part of the question. Oh, how do the males impress the females, Augustia? Um, that's a good question. They impress them with body condition, firstly. So a, will, a male wildebeest will look after himself by making sure he gets enough food and enough exercise. It's not a cognizant thing. This they do... Um, they do, uh, um, uh, th it's, it's a subconscious action for them. So they make sure that they get the best grass and they make sure that they get the, the, the best exercise in the best areas. The biggest, strongest, cleverest wildebeest will hold the biggest territories. And so female wildebeest will move through an area. They will naturally go to the areas of better grass and better grazing. And there they will find the males that have outcompeted other, other males uh, for that area and will be 
will be holding sway over the best resources. And in a way, the fact that I'm holding the best patch of ground, this is the best grass, look at me, uh, would show to those females that this male wildebeest is impressive. Um, but it's not something, it's not like, it's not a cognizant action if I could put it to you that way. Sorry, there's just some alarm calls going on on the other side, although I think it was one of them coughing. Um, so it's not a cognizant thing, it's just the natural order of the way that the best genes in that wildebeest herd at that particular, at that particular time of year will have the best areas. And then of course, that wildebeest's ability to keep his harem together. So that's where the brains come in, for lack of a better description, is his ability, not only in being able to, to hold off other males and to, to secure an, an area specifically for himself, but also in his ability to make sure that his females don't go anywhere else and he corrals them together and he herds them together. And the best wildebeest will have the biggest harems in the, in the best areas. And then it'll be on a sliding scale from there. So the wildebeest that stands alone in a very, very poor area, he's not going to get any females and so he won't pass his genes over to the next, the next, uh, the next herd or the, to the next generation. Hope that answered your question there. <laughs> anyway.